Hi guys, today I'm going to be trying to address a question that's been puzzling me for some time, which is how significant are monitor speakers in an overall monitoring situation? And more specifically, can EQ correction software like this, Sonar ID Reference, do enough to correct a cheaper pair of monitors like my old Rocket 5s to sound more like my more expensive Adam monitors? Let's find out, shall we? To deal with my growing sense of grit. Whenever my car. So here I've got my speakers set up on my desk. The first thing to say is this is not a massively scientific test. It's more my experience of using the Sonoworks Sound ID to match the EQ. Of course, the speakers are in different positions from one another. If we wanted to be trying to measure them and see how they were doing in a more scientific way, we'd have them in exactly the same position and we'd try some other things as well. But I just want to give you an idea of what a difference the Sonarworks can make and whether it narrows the gap between the expensive speakers, the Adams, which are about £700 to buy and the KRKs, which are more like £300 to buy. So they're a big difference in price. And I just want to check how much the Sonarworks narrows the gap between these different things. So to begin with, I'm just going to play um, some samples of music through each set of speakers with and without the EQ correction because I think that in itself is interesting to hear without comparing the two speakers to one another. So let's begin with the Rocket 5. And for our purposes, I'm just going to use a rock track that I recorded last year. So this is the Rocket 5 without calibration. So the first thing to say is there's a huge difference between the pre and post EQ calibration settings. Without the calibration, the Rocket 5s are incredibly bassy, um, quite pleasantly so. You know, as, as um, speakers to listen to music on a bookshelf, they would sound quite nice and they'd be great in a living room or a kitchen to play my music through, but in a recording, and mixing setting, they're giving me all sorts of bass information that isn't really there, I think. And the calibration definitely is correcting for that. And that's not entirely the speaker's fault. This desk is quite resonant. The room is quite resonant. The, um, the shape of the room, the shapes of the walls and so on uh, are quite resonant. You can see I do have some sound treatment up and that has made a big difference but it's still got its own EQ signature. And what the Sonarworks is doing in this case is knocking out some of that bass that isn't really there, that's really been generated by the speakers and by the desk they're sitting on. So let's now move to the Adams and see how they compare. Okay, so the Adams 2, without the calibration, 
are sounding more bassy. Now straight away, I would say that the Adams sound clearer. I don't think this is placebo. It's not just the fact I know that they're more expensive monitors. They just do sound less muddy in the mid range and in the upper ranges. Because of these ribbon tweeters that they have, they're just clearer sounding monitors. Nevertheless, I suspect that the difference now with the EQ engaged between the Rockets and the Adams really does uh, narrow them down a bit. To test that, we're now gonna flick between the Rockets and the Adams with the EQ calibration enabled. Yes, So, um, really interesting, I think. I should just say that in both cases, I dial back the dry wet. And the reason for that is that actually a totally flat EQ is quite difficult to listen to, I find, and quite um, unrealistic because almost nothing you're going to play it through has a flat EQ. Pretty well every playback device apart from a phone or a tablet has hyped bottom end. So I'm not a big fan of having the calibration up to 100% because it isn't really representative of anything else you'd be playing it back on. Anyway, so this is not a very scientific test, but my conclusions are, can you make a cheap set of speakers sound like an expensive set of speakers just by using EQ calibration? And the answer to that is no, you can't you do get what you pay for to a large extent. You're gonna get more definition, you're gonna get tighter sounding bass and um, more clarity in the mid range and a nicer, uh, more separated um, high end as well by going up market. But can you narrow the gap from a cheap pair of speakers to a more expensive speaker by using the EQ calibration? Well, yes, you definitely can, in the sense that you can get a better reference for the kinds of EQ moves you're making in your mix, and that should hopefully make your mix more transferable to other devices outside of your studio. So since I began building my studio, I've tried three different things as part of my monitoring upgrade. One is to buy new speakers. Did that make a difference? Yes, it did. These A5Xs have now been superseded by the latest generation that actually have Sonarworks profiles built into them. And um, my sense is that that would be a really good way to go if you're thinking about upgrading your speakers. I'm not wedded to Adams. You could use other brands and use Sonarworks separately. The other thing I did was to add sound treatment panels to my room. That made a huge difference in that it took away errant frequencies, errant delay and other kind of artifacts I was getting that were really only to do with the space I was listening in and nothing to do with the sound that was coming out of my speakers. And the final thing I tried has been Sonarworks Sound Reference ID. And the combination of all of these things has made a big difference. I wouldn't like to put percentages on it to compare them, but I think that it's worth considering 
all of these things if you're in a position to afford to do so. If you're not in a position to afford to do so, but you have some cheap monitors and you want to improve the situation, then I would say that the Sonarworks or an equivalent EQ calibration tool it was a really good investment. I got mine in a sale, I think it was only about 150 pounds in the UK. And um, I've been really delighted with it. It has made a huge difference. You could hear it there. If you've got too much bass pumping into the room, you'll be inclined to turn it down. And when you translate that to another environment like your car, all of a sudden the bass is gonna disappear. And so it's quite helpful to get rid of that so you're hearing things that are there and not hearing things that aren't there. Anyway, I hope you like this experiment guys. If you do, you might be interested in one or two of my other videos such as the one where I test out my sound treatment and even the one where I build the sound treatment. Thanks for coming along on the journey. If you feel like subscribing, that would be great. If you don't, then thanks for joining me on this video and I'll maybe see you on another occasion. Bye for now.